Okay, my little pre-cal pumpkins, we are gonna look at transforming a parent function. So what does this mean? It just means that um, transformations of equations just mean that, a, means that ugh, a graph changes as the parent function equation changes. Well, what does that mean, Miss Griggs? Well, I'm going to illustrate it here for you in just a second. So there are different types of transformations that we're gonna talk about. Translations, these are just horizontal and vertical shifts in the graph. So in other words, moving right, left, up, down. So let's, so right, left, up, down. Okay, reflections are going to be over the X axis or the Y axis, depending on how the movement occurs. And then dilations, if you'll recall from Algebra 2, this is when we have shrinking and stretching. So, for instance, if a parabola gets wider or skinnier than the parent. So, that's what that's going to look like. So, the only rules you really have to pay attention to here are just make sure that you choose your horizontal movement first and your vertical last. And um, the only reason this is really important is because when you're looking at something like the square root function, which looks like this, if you don't remember, the square root function can get a little tricky if you don't do them in the correct order. So I always say do horizontal shift first, then do vertical shift last. All right, so what would all this stuff look like in an equation? Because all of this, this is how the this is how the graph responds to the changes in the equation. So in the equation, what do all these transformations mean? So if you'll notice in this example right here, I've got a function here, f of x equals negative three times x plus four squared plus five. So let's look at everything that's happening in this graph. Essentially, what I'm gonna do is read the graph from left to right, because I'm just listing what's going to happen. So let's look at this. Let's look at every single piece of the graph. So this negative right here, that means that we are going to reflect. And since this negative is outside the parentheses where x resides, that's how we know it's going to be a reflection around the x-axis. Okay, so now we look at the three. Well, this would be a shrinking of a parabola that it gets thinner when the value is above one. So I like to talk about this this way. It just means that my y values change by three. And you can call it a, you can say it shrinks by three if you want to, but essentially what's happening to the y values is your y values are increasing by three. All right, and so then we look at what's happening with this positive four right here. Well, if you'll recall from algebra, this means that we have a shift left of four. And a lot of kids get confused about this because they see x plus four inside those parentheses. But if you'll think about it, if I had x plus four equal to zero and I was solving for it, I would move that four over, I would subtract it from both sides and x equals negative four. So when it's inside parentheses, it's gonna be the opposite sign that you see. So if, it had, if I had had written there x minus four squared, then that would indicate that I would be moving to the right four. 
Okay, and then of course this five here, this is the very last thing. This means a shift up of five. That positive sign is not inside parentheses, so it does exactly what you would expect it to. So if I was gonna list these in order, I was just reading my equation, but if I was going to list them in order of how I would graph it, then I would always start with my horizontal here. So I would say it's going left four, and then all the stuff in the middle doesn't matter. So I know that we reflect, oops, reflect over X axis, Y has a change by three, and then my vertical is the very last thing in order that I wanna talk about, groovy. So in the next video, we're going to do examples one through four. So enjoy.